G'day everybody, it's Dave from Wing Chun Mind Force. Hope you're having a happy Easter or a happy holiday or whatever it is you celebrate. Today I'm not in my bus because it's Easter and I want to share with you something pretty special about my great, my grandmaster, Sigung Chu Shong Tin. Something that's always inspired me and um, in my tiny way, I hope to try to follow in his footsteps. This is from his Book of Wing Chun, Volume 1, which is available out there. An incredibly important book. You really should have it if you haven't got it, if you're a serious practitioner. It says on page 11, that Chu does not look like a martial arts practitioner in appearance. Okay, so he doesn't look like a tough guy, bulging muscles, scowling face, you know, the what I often jokingly call the blitz face because it's Australian martial arts magazine forever. Really good magazine, but everybody always scowls, you know, anybody who's a real master always looks really vicious and um, I'm not really into that. Every now and then there's one that doesn't look vicious. <laughs> anyway, it says that, yeah, Chu doesn't really look like a martial artist, but he's self-disciplined, self-restricted, tolerant of others and magnanimous, always displaying the virtues of a respectable noble. I love that. That beautiful Chinese tradition of being like a, a noble warrior scholar you know, maybe living up in the mountains, painting, writing poetry, practicing Kung Fu. It's exactly the sort of lifestyle I'd like to have, which I sort of have a little bit. He never talks about colleagues, so he doesn't backstab. On the contrary, when others cast malicious views and criticisms on him, he just smiles them away with unruffled calm. And that's pretty cool. That's the way to deal with trolls and with People that put you down, there's always going to be people. Actually, sometimes, you know, we all think negatively of others at times and sometimes you can be really surprised by what a nice person they actually are, how good their Wing Chun is when uh, you finally touch them and find out the truth rather than whatever you've conceived in your mind. He says, all this has manifested his admirable martial arts virtues. Moreover, Chu is passionate and devoted in propagating the Wing Chun martial art. He never reserves in explaining lucidly and demonstrating directly to learners. He authored the essence of Wing Chun into the book of Wing Chun in three volumes, Chinese only. We've got them in two as a multilingual version, sort of in... Chinese and English. I've written all over mine. Now they were published in 1993, expositing a clear and comprehensive picture to learners. He further published a DVD entitled The Chu Shang Ting Wing Chun in 2002, which is another priceless gem sharing his invaluable experience in and vividly demonstrating the power possibly attained from Wing Chun. Such openness in unreservedly shaving, sharing his pre precious enlightenment of the art of Wing Chun to all, carrying the heritage forward through generations, is indeed a role model which every martial arts learner should admire. And I, for one, as a martial arts learner, have always admired that. Now, this is the key thing. In Chu's view, there is no secret in the Wing Chun art that would be too precious to open to all. And there is no place for the claim of closed door secret training at all. Now, that's very important because even myself, sometimes I've thought, should I be revealing this stuff? Like when I talked about you know, some of the secrets of Chum Q, um, well, Chum Q, but Bill G. Um, when I talked about Qi, you know, developing Qi in your hands, 
chi moving these sort of things are sort of secrets so they're almost unknown but those at the higher end of things know well but they're just not talked about it's sort of a a private thing but um i've always felt and i guess pretty early on i realized you know that sigung passed everything on without holding back and that's that's my attitude to be like him to pass on the secrets now i asked my friend tony sailor who's somebody i regard as up there with the very highest skilled practitioners in the world I said to him, you know, am I making a mistake by revealing these secrets? What if somebody, you know, goes the Darth Vader path? And he said to me, he believes that, and I think I'm pretty sure he said that Sigung said this to him, that a bad person can't get anywhere in this art. And I think that makes sense to me because the higher levels of the art are not something that you can just gain by sweat. Um, it's sort of the opposite. You've got to be that laid back. You've got to be relentless in your practice. You've got to be devoted. You've got to think about it all the time. But the real power comes from actually really letting go of everything, of all greed and the need to be the best, the need to be powerful, the need to be, um, you know, a grimacing master. The real power is sort of hidden. And for me, at least, the path has been this constant battle with my ego, which is quite strong, you know, I'm quite a hothead, I'm quite, passionate but sometimes in not a good way i get upset about things i'm a fighter i basically don't like injustice and i always want to stand up and get stuck into it but really the attitude to have is the other way to back off your ego to to sort of let the real power which you could call the universe or god or the Tao or whatever you feel it is let that sort of work through you and so it's the Buddhist thing really is not desiring, like taking what life gives to you as the right thing, which is what the Tao sort of is about, you know, the, the natural flow of things, not going against the grain, just accepting your fate, which is not easy to do in the Western, you know, and Eastern um, paradigm of, needing to have lots of money, own houses, own, own all sorts of stuff, have the power to fly around the world and do whatever you want. I mean, who would want that stuff? But it can be a false sort of thing. Anyway, Master Chu had no place for secrets in Wing Chun. And he, he believed that you should let it all out and i really love this there is no place for the claim of closed door secret training at all so you hear this sometimes a certain master was given secret training and everyone else got the bullshit training he's you know very very close to master yip man good friend of his lived with him for years he used to run his school for years very, very senior student of the old master. And he's saying, yeah, there's no secret art. Um, the only thing I would say about, not really secret, but in my experience, the real masters are very wise and they sort of give you stuff when you're ready. But that's, when you're hands on with somebody, you know, they don't want to overwhelm you. They don't want to try to make you get something that you're not ready for, but they, they do give you gifts when you are ready. And it's always very pleasing. So I just wanted to show you something. I'll just pause for a sec. This is my collection of books that I've 
I started back in 1997. This was the very first one when I joined my seafood school, Seafood Gym Form, 97 to 98. I love these books. I, I used to collect these as a kid. Um, Chinese notebooks. I think they're sort of a British tradition as well, but they're really old school, sort of cloth tape and paper. And I just kept notes. I, I wrote everything my teachers ever said to me. Uh, yeah, so I've got so much stuff and, you know, I don't go through them all the time, but sometimes I, you know, I read through and I go, wow, yeah. And, and recently I was reading one of the, my oldest ones when I was training with Susanna Ho, and this is the current one. See, I've got a, it was a rip on there and being an artist, I tend to see stuff and I saw this, like the Taoist priest that Bruce Lee drew in his Tao of Jeet Kune Do, looking at the stars. See, he's looking at the stars. So that's my recent one. And there's the others. So that's 26 years worth of inspiration and it's a pleasure to go through these books. This is a really old book, this one's from the 70s, didn't even have a barcode on it. So um, these books are a treasure trove of brilliant things from masters and sometimes I only understand now, after 20 years I read it and go, oh, okay, yep, I understand. Sometimes I've sort of understood, but now I understand deeper. So that's it. I'm just encouraging you to, if you're a student, um, be devoted, do it every day, keep notes like I did. It's something one of Seagong's friends and students told me that he used to say to him, are you keeping notes? Are you writing down what I tell you? Because if you're not, more fool you, basically. How would you say that in Chinese? <laughs> yeah, the other one is missing out. If you forget what I tell you, I'm I'm giving you pearls, and I know as a teacher, this it's very frustrating when you um, you give away pearls and they get trampled in the mud. Um, you feel sorry for the people. It's like I've got the pearls. I'm giving you a copy of my pearls. If you just think, oh yeah, whatever, that's just nothing special, then the other one is missing out. Because I got my pearls from others who gave me the pearls and I've worked on my pearls. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, the important thing is keep the knowledge, you know, keep it. And of course, as you realise probably that as a person, you're sort of becoming Wing Chun. You're becoming Wing Chun Mind Force. You're becoming a person that's different to an ordinary person. This changes you, this art teaches you a way of force. It also teaches you other things that are harder to define, but it gives you peace. Um, it relaxes you. I think it even heals your body at a higher level and even maybe at a lower level it does stuff for you but certainly um it's something wonderful but you get to a point where you don't need all the books i mean that's why i don't look at them so much because it's all part of me and a lot of the stuff that's in there i've grown out of it past it but i'm glad i wrote it down i see my own development and i see how others develop too because i've seen teachers you know, in 26 years, I've seen them change in what they understood. And we're all alive and we keep developing in our Wing Chun. So that's it for today. There's no secrets. I'll continue to pass on to you the secrets. Um, hopefully you've got a teacher um, who can help you and maybe even listens to me a little bit, but Wherever you're at, if you're out somewhere in a, a land or a country or a town where you've got no Wing Chun 
especially Chushong Tin lineage, which is my lineage um, around you, then have a look at my videos. People have said to me, oh, Dave, how do I learn this? I said, go and have a look at my flaming videos. I've been, I don't know, 150 there. I've been making them for several years. And I think I've probably said just about everything there is to say. So if you can bear listening to me and looking at me, um, you might be surprised what you get from it. And take some notes. You know, just write down the salient things. All right, so that's it. Enjoy the next couple of days and I'll see you next time. And watch out for the second part of my interview with William Lung. Everyone liked that one. Okay, bye-bye.